Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. You know, even among experienced and skilled professionals, there's a lot of anxiety-inducing mystery when it comes to job searching. In the highly acclaimed career self-help guidebook, Take Charge of Your Career, Marianne Camara gives practical tips and advice in seeking the job of a lifetime and introduces the radically new author-designed high-impact resume and high-impact cover letter. Mary Ann holds a degree in physics from Ohio State, has done graduate study in engineering analysis. She's also worked as an engineering analyst for two Fortune 500 companies in the aerospace industry. In later years, she earned a certificate in personnel management from New York University and extensive clinical training in psychotherapy. When it comes to writing effective resumes, she draws from a highly diversified career, which included preparing resumes for hundreds of clients. Now, along with that, she's helped create incredible attention-grabbing cover letters for various types of clients and put them one step closer to landing a well-matched job. Marianne Camara, author of Take Charge of Your Career, a guide to organizing and conducting a successful job search in these competitive times, is our guest on This Week in America. Marianne, welcome to the program. A pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for inviting me. It is our pleasure. This is such an important job that you do in this book, that you are pointing out to, to everybody how to find that perfectly fit job that we're all looking for. The book is receiving rave reviews. How did you decide on this book for a job search at this time? What was the motivation for this book? When I was uh, writing resumes for people, I was surprised by how many it told me about bad experiences that they had, that they were in a toxic situation. They didn't know how to get out. Well, I I listened to them and I had to tell them eventually that they had to put that behind me, behind them. <laughs> but uh, thinking about that afterwards, it occurred to me that if you're in that kind of a situation where someone is riding you or driving you or whatever, uh, you're you're unhappy with your job, you've given charge of your career to somebody else. That's interesting. And I love the title because that really says it, doesn't it? Uh, Take charge of your career. It sounds simple, but most most of us don't do that, do we? A lot of us don't. Some people do. Most of my clients did, but there was a a big group that did not. So the idea is to set them on a different track. Different employee, employers have, uh, in places of employment, have different personalities, just like uh, people do. So there's no reason that you have to stay, stay in a situation where you're unhappy. All of this is in Mary Ann's book, Take Charge of Your Career, a guide to organizing and conducting a successful job search in these competitive times. Mary Ann Camara, that's C-H-I-M-E-R-A. Book available wherever books are sold. I'll direct you, of course, to Amazon, readersmagnet.com, and all these links on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Who is this book designed for? Who, do you, who did you have in mind as you were writing Take Charge of Your Career? People who wanted to advance their career or to put it on a different track. However, the book's good for anyone who wants a job because it's got a a lot of information about the job search that you're not going to find anywhere else that I couldn't find anywhere else anyway. There's a lot, and that's what sets this book apart. There is a really a lot of unique information there that uh, I mentioned Marianne's background and what she's been through in the letters she's read, the, the resume she's read and written. She knows what's effective, what gets the job done. In fact, I, I just said that this book is unique. What do you think, Marianne, this book sets, what sets it apart from others about finding a new job? When you started out to write this, what did you want to do to make this different than the others? Actually, I just wanted to have a comprehensive book on on job search. But when I started looking around, I found only two different types of of books. One was how to write a resume. 
And the other one was how to uh, climb the corporate ladder using the job search. Uh, what colors your parachute is a good example oh, of that. Exactly. Probably the most famous one. Why the emphasis on... I did on, oh, finish that, yes. Excuse me. I didn't find any book that covered the entire job search that went beyond the resume. It was just... There, it just wasn't out there. I thought there'd be a zillion books out there. There aren't any. It's very comprehensive, and you mentioned resumes, and let's start with talking about that. Why the emphasis on on resumes? Employers require them. They they're very useful to to the employers. The also, uh, people have a lot of strange ideas of what a re resume is. A lot of people think it's a work history, and that's not true. It does have elements of a work history in it, but its purpose is to get you an interview. Its sole purpose is to get you an interview, to get, you, to get people to talk to you, to think about how you will fit into their operation. And that's interesting because so many of us, when we write a resume, we'll sort of do a, chrono a chronological listing of our jobs and, and have that all there. And you're saying as someone who's read and evaluated these, that's really not the approach to take then, is it? Well, it's part of the approach. To yes. Take. You, you do have to summarize your, your past. What's different about my uh, take charge or my high impact resume is that it tells the employer what's special about you. The standard resume, which is about 100 years old, I understand, is it tells you about your work history and your talents and your, or your, uh, what you know how to do and stuff like that, your education. But it doesn't tell the employer what's special about you. And that's, that's really the difference that in the high-impact resume. It starts off with a section that's not in the uh, standard resume that tells the employer it precisely that, why you want to work for them, what you, what you hope to do for them. How important is the beginning of the resume? You just talked on, uh, that's where with the high-impact, you start with that. How important is it? to capture their attention right away? And how many paragraphs do you have before you lose them if you don't capture their attention? I'm not sure of the answer to this, the second part, but it is important to capture their attention right away because you, you want them to start off right away thinking about where you fit into their operation. And you lay this all out for people, job seekers to follow as they're looking for a job, take charge of your career, a guide to organizing and conducting a successful job search in these competitive times. Marianne Camara is our guest and the author, C-H-I-M-E-R-A, if you're Googling, book available wherever books are sold. What's missing in, in a resume? What are some of the common things that are not in a resume that you would encourage people to include? Just what I said, that it doesn't tell you. A resume is essentially a sales document. Yes. However, the standard resume is essentially just a work history, a, a, a data collection. What I have added to it is, is the sales element, basically. It looks different. And also, I should mention that I give many examples from actual resumes. Now, I've made some strategic changes in these these examples so that to protect the privacy of of my clients. But uh, the the examples talk about uh, real jobs and show how it's, it's set up. The the High impact resume is flexible in how it, it, it is, the bottom half is set up. It puts the most important data near the middle where people will see it first. Yes. 
How long should a resume be? I hear conflicting opinions on that from, you know, short to extensive and others say if you go too long, you lose them before you get to the, uh, to the end of it. Is there an ideal length or does it depend on, on who you are and what you're trying to sell? I've never done a resume longer than one page. Interesting. Yes. Think about uh, what happens when the employer comes in. Say you're, you're talking about a large corporation that it got a new tra- contract and is going to get thousands of resumes. How much time are they going to spend on a resume? Just enough to e- evaluate it at first and uh, throw out the ones that they don't want, that, that, ha- that are not they figure are not relevant. So if you if you're making a long resume, you're you're simply indulging yourself and wasting your employer's time. So there's really an editing process. I'm thinking if, I'm sure you have to go back and consolidate and condense and abbreviate and uh, and get it down to a page. So there's there's some work that goes into that. It's not just a recitation of your skills and uh, your qualifications. There, this is a a case of writing as well, isn't it? Being a good writer. Yes, yes, I think that's true. The book is Take Charge of Your Career, A Guide to Organizing and Conducting a Successful Job Search in These Competitive Times by uh, Mary Ann Camara. You hear people talk about uh, who actually reads a resume. Is it even done by a person? Is it scanned by a computer? Who reads the resume? Who's the one that's sort of the gatekeeper for the resume? I've been out of business for a few years, so I'm not sure exactly how, but usually it depends on the size of the company. If you got a if you got a small operation, it's uh, the owner. If you got a larger uh, operation, it's the personnel department. However, they I don't know whether they do it by uh, scanning it, but they they'll pass them out, and then the personnel department looks through them first, and then saves the ones that are interesting. They think think are worth yep, yes. further review to to give to pass out to. Uh, the people in charge, and usually that's the person who's the head of the department. It might be the uh, technical head, and and usually somebody from personnel in that in that group. I mean, there may be others, but those are, those are usually other the ones that you have to capture their attention. I mentioned high impact resume. I use the word revolutionary. Uh, I think that's accurate because this is really different and highly praised for for the concept that you've come up with. What makes the high impact resume revolutionary? How does this differ from the the ordinary resume that we're accustomed to? I believe it's the first major reorganization of the standard resume ever. I'm not, they, there are, they distinguish between, between two, the standard resume and uh, the functional resume, but the only difference between the two is the order that you list your, your experience. Yes. And it's not a very profound. And I go back and forth between, uh, between them as seems appropriate to me. But this is actually reorganized. It looks different. It has a line across the middle of the page to separate the parts that you don't have. And it has this section that tells what is special about this employee, why they should consider this employee, this potential candidate over all the people who have similar backgrounds. And all of these examples, as Marianne pointed out in the book, take charge of your career, how to lay it out, how it is different, how it stands out, how it will get you to the, to the head of the pack. And the other part of the, that we're discussing today is, is cover letters and the importance of cover letters. In fact, let's talk about importance. Do you, do you really still need a cover letter? Do you think? That is the foremost question that I was asked as a resume writer. Do I need a cover letter? And the answer is, frankly, that you don't absolutely need one. Thousands of people get jobs every day without a cover letter. A better question is, do you want one? And that answer is, is that you do. You definitely do. 
how do I go about doing the cover letter? What are, what are the tips that would make my cover letter stand out, but not really say the same thing I'm going to say in my resume? What should I have in my cover letter that sets them up in anticipation for my resume? I, my high impact cover letter uh, has three sections. And I, I tell you what to say at the beginning, what to say in the middle, and what to say at the end. And that's all laid out. So there, and there it's, is a format to that. So the cover letter can be productive, but it's not. It's not a reflection of the uh, 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 the resume, and the resume is not a, a continuation of the uh, of the cover letter. It's interesting, and it's all broken down. And in, in Marianne's book, "Take Charge of Your Career: A Guide to Organizing and Conducting a Successful Job Search in These Competitive Times," once you've got the resume, you got the cover letter, you got the resume. What's my next step for a successful job search? Job search. It used to be until uh, recently you'd grab a Sunday newspaper that had all the jobs in there. I'm not sure there are many in there anymore, or if there even is a Sunday paper in many cities. But what's the best way to go about a job? That is the second half of my book, and I talk about what employers do to look for when they have a job that they want to put out, how how they go about it. I talk, talk about how you should go about it and, and the various uh, things that you could use, you know, such as uh, headhunters. Those, those, that's the general term for employment agencies. And actually, you mentioned the newspapers, and a lot of people start and stop there, and that's, that's usually the last thing that an employer does is to advertise in the newspaper. He wants to get. He wants to get to uh, through all the the costs, the less expensive methods uh, first. Yes, and that makes sense. I never really looked at it that way. When you're at the newspaper, that's sort of like the the end of the line in in trying to find somebody. Boy, so much information in Marianne's new book. Take charge of your career: a guide to organizing and conducting a successful job search in these competitive times. Do people make a mistake of uh, once they get a job, a job offer, taking the first one without really considering what the the employer is offering, what they can offer the employer, and whether this is really a job they want? Do they are we too quick to accept a job offer? I think many people are, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, you should allow some time for other uh, other. Uh, responses to come in. I should point out, though, that that is also one of the differences in this book is that we do that it does discuss how you go about uh, looking for a job. I'm not aware of any book that tells you that any other book. It also talks about qualifying employers, though, know, that's a sales term. A, a good salesman qualifies the people he's going to make a presentation to in order to determine if they're going, they're likely to buy. You want to qualify the place where you're going to work to see if it fits you. Yes. And so often you hear people that take the job, then realize later, this is not a really good fit. Job's great. It doesn't really fit what I want, what I should have been looking for in a job. You see other you see people that say it's easier to get a job if you have a job. So if you're looking, it's best if you do it from a position of employment. Is that true? Does that impact uh, your employment possibility if you're out of work at the time you're looking? Yes, employers look more favorably on people who have a job. So if you're in the situation we talked about in the beginning where you're in a, a toxic situation, don't quit your job. It's, it, Set up your uh, your job search strategy, and when you have a few offers at hand, then then you could quit your job. In the book, you talk about some common challenges that people face. What would maybe one or two of those that are challenges that are sort of universal as you're looking for a job that we all face? There are four that are discussed. One is your first job. A lot of uh, young uh, people mistakenly think that they're up against uh, 
older, more experienced uh, employees, and that's not true. They, they are up against people like themselves because young people have a specific advantage that the older employees don't have. The second is making a jobs uh, change. Maybe your doctor told you you can't do what you were doing anymore, or maybe you're coming back after raising your kids so that they they don't need your constant attention. Or maybe you just wanted a, a different uh, career. The, what, what you chose at 22 isn't pro- it doesn't work anymore when you're 42. The, th- the third one is age discrimination. There are practical a- a- a suggestions about how to avoid telegraphing that you're getting close to retirement age. And the fourth one is what to do if you've been fired. Now, there's a difference between being two between being fired and laid off. You're laid off because there's no more work for you. You're fired because you did something or because somebody did, didn't like you or for something like that. And being, I, I, that is also unique to the book that it does discuss that particular problem. Is it in your best interest to be honest if you've been in a position where you've been fired or try to cover it with a lot of flowery words and explanations and and do it that way or or face it head on I, i'm sure they do their research into someone what's the, what's the best way to handle that when you've been fired so it doesn't it's not a major negative that holds you back well it's it's never good to lie to be dishonest <laughs> yes yes but it's uh you you have to analyze your situation and then you have to figure out a strategy for uh, carrying it out. And that difference be, differs according to the reason that you were fired. All this and more in uh, Mary Ann's book, Take Charge of Your Career, A Guide to Organizing and Conducting a Successful Job Search in These Competitive Times. I want to talk about organizing and conducting in the couple minutes we have, have left in the program. How important is organizing a job search? I would imagine for many, it's sort of a haphazard thing, a spur of the moment, a a gut feeling type of thing. You use the word organizing. How important is it to organize the search? It's like organizing a sales pitch. You you, you have to know what you're selling. And what you're selling in this case is your skills. The primary tool for organizing turns out to be when you're writing your resume because that's where you collect the information about yourself that will make you attractive to an employer. That's so fascinating. We're back to the resume and how important that is to do that properly. And the, uh, the power of the uh, high impact resume, which has been developed by our guest on the program, uh, competitive times, uh, how, how, in the time that you were active, how, have you ever seen market shifts like this where you've got uh, so much going on, so much uh, volatility in, in the uh, employment market? I, no, it, it was a slower time than this, but it, there was a lot of comp- competition and jobs. This works whether the, the job market is, is slow or fast or high, whether it's hard to get yes. a job or whether it's easy to get a job. If, if it's easy to get a job, you're going to get try to get the best job you can. If it's harder to get a job, these are strategies that will work. I might add that there are some 22 high impact tips, and these are either things that you can do to strengthen your case or things that you should avoid in order to uh, not make a bad impression. All of that in Mary Ann's book, Take Charge of Your Career, A Guide to Organizing and Conducting a Successful Job Search in These Competitive Times. Mary Ann Camara, that's C-H-I-M-E-R-A, book available wherever books are sold. Uh, I thank Readers Magnet, self-publishing and marketing company for arranging our conversation with Mary Ann today. And uh, based on all of her years of experience, all the resumes successfully she's written and read and evaluated, so much good information there, including the high-impact uh, resume, the high-impact cover letter, high-impact tips that you will find throughout the book. Mary Ann, a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Very informative program. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.
You're welcome. You're listening to This Week in America, and we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.